A car like this is such a unicorn that it's hard to even put a value on it. So I am, uh, again, constantly, always searching for lost cars and treasured cars. My wife thinks I'm probably, I don't know, who knows what I'm doing in the middle of the night, but I'm on my laptop looking at registries and looking at cars that haven't been found in 20, 30 years. And there's always been a couple cars that stood out. Uh, one was the Walter Wolf Countaches. There were these very famous Countaches back in the day that were the first cars with wings and spoilers. And as a Lamborghini nut, you'd say there's you know, maybe 10, 20 other really iconic cars like that. So one day I'm actually on Instagram, of all places, I would search, and I still do, search cars by a hashtag. And I would look up Countach hashtag and I'd scroll through the photos and, you know, most of the cars I knew or I knew where they were, but sometimes something would pop up interesting. Scrolling through and I see this really odd Countach in the back of a picture with its two Countaches, a 25th anniversary, and this odd like metallic colored Countach with white interior. What I noticed was it had these red wheels and like these crazy side skirts. And I'm looking at the car and studying Countaches my entire life. It occurred to me, I think this is a special car. I look at the username of the person on Instagram. I message them. They message me back. Is this your car? Where did you see it? Like, you know, is it for sale? And they immediately responded saying, no, it's in storage at this storage facility. So I got the name and I called. I called the storage facility. I said, hi, how are you? I'm a Lamborghini historian and a, a slash collector. I didn't want to use the word dealer, but I, I heard you might have some interesting Countaches. Do you know if they're for sale or some information? Pleasant lady, but she was pretty short with me. She's like, no, sorry, we're storage and there's, it's not for sale. The car's not for sale. I said, okay. Still looked at that photo. I'm like trying to zoom in on Instagram. And about like two, three hours later, I get a call from a gentleman, an incredibly nice guy. He's like, yes, there's two Countaches here. No, they're not for sale. But one of the cars is the very famous twin turbo. And I said, how do you know that? And he said, well, no, it says turbo on the side, like in massive letters. <laughs> and he says, you open the engine, there's these two big turbos. And he goes, no, it's a, it's a, from my understanding, it's a multi-million dollar car. And so I told him, do you think the owner would sell it? And he goes, well, I know the whole history of the car. It was, it was, it was owned by a, a car collector here for many years. When he passed away, this other gentleman purchased it and he doesn't want to sell it. He actually typically keeps the cars in his living room and blah, 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 blah. And he doesn't want to sell. I said, do you mind if I come and see the car? And I imagine, so I'm calling this gentleman. He's in Reno, Nevada. I'm in Miami, Florida. So it's a little bit of a hike. But I was so intrigued that it could potentially be a Countach Turbo that I had to go and see the car. So... The backstory is in the 1980s, Lamborghini was sort of struggling in a period where they're being purchased by the Mimram brothers. And you had a lot of distributors and you had dealers and, and people started to do interesting things. I mean, think about it. This was a time with Roof and Gambala and Koenig and all these crazy tuners creating different projects. There was an incredible guy by the name of Max Bobnar. And Max was MB Sports Cars, which MB Sports Cars was one of the Lamborghini distributors in Europe, primarily in Switzerland. And Max actually had a big Lamborghini collection himself and was a very well-respected guy. Max started experimenting with Countach turbos. Max actually created two cars, which were famously known as the Countach Turbo. And the two cars were even, I think if you Google them, even come up in Wikipedia pages. And they were very well known. There was posters on the cars, magazines on the cars. There were even toy models built of both cars. So there was a black, black car um, that had black wheels and like these crazy side skirts. And then personally, my favorite was a, a really beautiful metallic red car with white interior, racing seat belts, and red wheels. There's the, actually even a famous photo of the Countach Turbo with Valentino Balboni, the famous Lamborghini test driver, Ferruccio Lamborghini, obviously the founder of Lamborghini, standing next to the Walter Wolf Countach, arguably the most famous Countach of all time, and the Countach Turbo. Iconic photo, again, only adding to the history of these Countach Turbo cars. So they were never actually built at the factory, but they were done by the, probably one of the most prominent distributors at the time and sort of done in a way where Lamborghini felt it was okay. The cars were shown, they were used. He was actually selling these as a kit. Only two cars were made. And if you believe Wikipedia at the time, the red car was destroyed. 
and it was it was in numerous forums and in groups it was actually considered as disappeared and destroyed jump on a flight I think I was in Reno, Nevada, maybe two, three days later. I couldn't wait. I arrived to the storage facility and, you know, upon walking in, you see like, you know, GT3 RS, an old C4 Corvette, nothing too crazy, um, but some nice cars. I think there was a Lotus Esprit or something like that. And then in the back, there's these two Countach's. Immediately as I walked in, I could not hide my excitement. If I was there to buy the car that day, I probably had the worst poker face imaginable because I couldn't wipe the grin off my face. I realized at that moment, sitting in front of me was the lost Countach Turbo. Almost as like a little kid, I ran up to the car and I started inspecting it. And I'm looking at the tires and it's got the original Pirelli P7Rs. It has the original boost gauge from the old photos. It has the original turbos from old photos. It has the original seat belts. I mean, the car looked like someone in 1984 drove this car maybe 2,000 miles and put it away. It was so well preserved. The interior was still bright white. The dash, which was mouse hair material, was still in very nice condition. Forgetting the fact that I'm in the business of buying and selling cars for a profit, I had to buy the car. Almost to a fault, I, I had to buy it um, and, and maybe would have paid anything for the car. I ended up negotiating with the owner of this car and a sister car with it, which was a Countach 25th anniversary. It had never been titled, never registered. It was a brand new car with 400 miles. And both these cars were sitting in the gentleman's living room for many, many years. Apparently, in the 1980s, there was a very famous casino operator in Reno, Nevada. He owned a, a, a casino called Circus Circus. And he actually used to display cars inside the casino. He had Ferraris and Lamborghinis. His favorite car, ironically, and I've been told, was the Lamborghini Countach Turbo. When he passed away, he was quite the sort of icon in the area in, in Reno, Nevada. Another, and I wouldn't even call him a collector, another gentleman with the means, was able to buy both Countaches, looked at the cars as art, and actually put them in his living room. Over the years, he'd have them moved to storage sometimes and then brought back to the house. But I actually negotiated with this gentleman for about a year. He was very adamant at first about not selling the cars. We went back and forth. And I knew all along that I was taking a risk. There was no way for me to really document further without going detailed into the car, without really sending everything to Lamborghini, without talking to Max Bobnar, without talking to other historians. And I didn't want anyone in the world to know that I had discovered the car. So while trying to verify what it was, I was also trying to keep things very quiet. Now, I could verify the ownership history, but I couldn't verify all the details because I didn't want people to know. So I was almost negotiating against myself because I wanted the car so badly, but I also knew as a business, I had to be okay. I had to be safe. A car like this is such a unicorn that it's hard to even put a value on it. Is it worth this or is it worth this? And really the only way to tell is when you finally put it out to market sometimes. One day, I get a call from the gentleman at the storage facility and he goes, I think it's time. I think he's finally ready to sell. Within about two, three days, I ended up getting into such a great argument with the owner that I almost wasn't even allowed to purchase the cars because he was that upset with me. I wasn't being rude. I wasn't being mean. I was just being very honest about the value of Countach's and the value of the market, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So after, let's say, almost a year and a half, we ended up purchasing the cars, bringing them back to Miami. I personally think the Countach Turbo was one of the most interesting discoveries that we had ever made, not just because it was a very cool car and because it was, you know, a, a, a turbo Countach with a lot of horsepower, but because also it's an icon to Lamborghini enthusiasts. I've run into so many people since we discovered it, since we showed photos to the world that called me and said, oh my God, I always wanted to see that car. We even had a collector out of the Northeast that called me and he said, if I didn't already have two Countaches, I'd have to buy this car. He flew down just to see it and then told me that he actually was gonna figure out how to convince his wife to buy a third Countach. The story gets even funnier because he actually brought a poster of the car that he had when he was a kid and he told himself as a kid that he would one day own the car. Probably at some point 
five, 10 years ago when he started buying Countach's, he actually asked another historian to find him that exact car. The historian couldn't at the time. The car was, you know, very hidden away. And he ended up buying two other cars. Unfortunately, he didn't end up with the car, but just seeing the smile on his face when he saw it, that moment made the whole discovery and everything worthwhile. Going somewhere in a hurry, ma'am? Let me explain your options. Never mind, I got this. The Ticket Clinic.com